Shalom, everybody, and happy Holy Week. I would like to commence my study on prayer. We've now come to part six, and it's going to be that the will of God be done on earth as it is in heaven. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The Lord's Prayer is truly heavenly. It directs us to our Father in heaven. It is to heaven that we look for and seek the blessings we need. The prayer seems designed to shape our affections and desires towards things above, towards heaven. We are being taught to align our wills to heaven's agenda as we ask for God's request, God's kingdom and will to be done, and for God's name to be hallowed and glorified above all of our own personal needs and desires. Yet here in the third request, our minds and desires are actually directed also toward this earth. What we're asking for is that the will of God would be done here on earth as it is in heaven. We're desiring that the contrast between heaven and earth would be removed and that the worship and free obedience towards God that characterizes heaven would be done here on earth. I'm going to quote Adolf Safer again a couple of times in this article. This will be the first one from his book, The Lord's Prayer. We have been so long accustomed to see ignorance and sin prevail on earth that our expectations concerning its future are generally far from the high standard of prophecy. For so many centuries, the large majority of human beings have lived without the knowledge and fear of God. Israel and the church have formed so small a portion of the human race that the prospect of all nations serving and praising God is little realized by us. We are apt to think only of individuals saved and made meat for heaven, forgetting that God's real purpose is that on earth and in the form of our present physical and national life, his will should be obeyed and his name glorified. The Lord's Prayer, Adolf Safir. God the Father has not given up on this earth nor on humanity. The day will come when all men will render to God full and loving obedience as his meat. The will of God is going to be done on earth as it is in heaven, and we are to pray for this. We pray that we ourselves as individuals would do the will of God uh, in this life. We need to pray for a submissive uh, and humble spirit and pray that the rebellion and indwelling iniquity that plagues our own lives would be subdued and mortified. We need to pray the will of God for families too, that and churches and the nation that we live in as well. For God has a will for us all and would have Christians bow the knee and plead that God would be glorified in the fulfillment of this will. Safer holds forth in this chapter on the will of God two examples of obedience to God's will that we should emulate and pray that we can reflect. The angels and the incarnate Son of God. Think about angels for a minute. Angels ascend and descend between heaven and earth, not as mediators, but as servants of God's will. Think Jacob's ladder. Angels are far more active on this earth than most of us could ever fathom, and the Bible speaks much more about them also than many realize. Now, God would not have us develop a strange fascination with angels, which is why they are acknowledged in the Bible, but not dwelt on. The holy angels delight to obey God. They have seen his face and they love and fear him in the purest sense of the word. The angels are interested in the earth on God's behalf, and they are very interested in man. We are told that angels rejoice over every repentant sinner, that they are set as guardians over little children, that they appear to the patriarchs and prophets, that they wonder about salvation. The angels ministered to the Lord Jesus on this earth when he was born and after he was tempted in the wilderness. Furthermore, the angels will be totally involved in the eschaton. It is they who will separate the wheat from the chaff. And the angels will come back with Jesus. They will participate in the sheep and the goats' judgment. And Michael, the archangel, will stand up for Israel in the final days. Angels obey God. They do his will lovingly joyfully, unhesitantly, 
They carry out his every command, both in heaven and on earth. Safer again. The angels obey God because they see his face continually. Their obedience is implicit, but not blind. God's authority is perfect light and love. Thus ought our obedience to be in knowledge and meditation. Work is prayer acting. The obedience of angels, as we have seen, is varied and comprehensive. Some watch over little children. Others are given uh, charge over believers in danger. Some seem assigned to their care mighty empires and various elements of this world. But their motive is always love to God, and their object is God's glory. As God is their center, the utmost harmony and unity prevail among them. And that's from that book. It goes without saying that the highest manifestation of obedience on this earth, though, to the Father in heaven would be the Son of God, Jesus the Messiah. There's just no comparison. And I'll quote Psalm 40, verse 6 to 8. Sacrifice and offering you do not desire. My ears have you opened. Burnt offering and sin offering have you not required. Then said I, lo, I come. In the volume of the book it is written of me. I delight to do thy will, O my God. Yea, thy law is within my heart. Psalm 40, 6 through 8. Jesus anticipated and longed to do God's will on this earth before he even came in the incarnation. With the Father, he was undertaking our salvation from all eternity. Just think about that. The incarnation was an act of loving and freely granted obedience to the Father. Jesus humbled himself and took upon himself the form of a servant, and he even died in order to establish God's will on this earth. It's impossible to describe the quality and unique character of the obedience of Jesus. Really, it is impossible for any of us to grasp it. After all, none of us can really fully relate. For who among us has left heaven? and an eternal communion with God the Father in order to become a baby, a child, a teenager, to put ourselves under submission, to suffer and die under a false accusation, in order to do God's will on earth as, as it has always been in heaven. None of us could say we left heaven to do that. Everything of his earthly walk was costly obedience, yet Jesus gladly offered it. Yes, he did. He did it for the joy set before him, the Bible says, and out of love for the Father and love for those whom God had given him. Now we are the vanguard of the coming new day. Imagine if the will of God was done on earth, happy, happily, lovingly, and reverently. That day will come, and we, the church, for we, the church, it has already begun to commence. The earth will be filled with the knowledge of God as the waters cover the sea. This earth will become the arena of God's will. Sin and death will not be the last word. Sin and death will not prevail. Let's all pray that the will of God would be done on earth as it is in heaven. Shalom, everybody.